what frustrates you the most about today's culture? Um, today's culture. Um, you know, I, I, again, like, I guess frustrate is kind of a strong word. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that really, there's nothing that really frustrates me. You know, I guess it's, it's nothing that I really dwell on. Like, man, like, this is really frustrating. But, um, yeah, I guess if, if I had to think about something that, you know, maybe I wish was different. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing about it is, I think it, I think we're very risk averse. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we don't we don't take enough risk out here. It's debatable how much progress that we've made. You know, I, I, obviously I'm a finance guy, so I look at things financially, yeah. economically. Right. You know, you look at African American household income versus pretty much everyone else. Um, yeah. It hasn't grown, and it's substantially uh, it's substantially smaller. Um, and you look at how wealth is created, right? Number one, generational wealth. We right. obviously have. Uh, are behind on that because I mean we yeah. got a late start. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you look at how wealth is created again, investment in financial assets, stocks and bonds and things like that. We just don't do that. Um, and and just because we're risk averse, yeah. we're more willing to invest in like real estate, which is good. But um, maybe the educational piece too. Maybe a lot of people yeah. don't know how to do that. Yeah. Th and that that is a big that is a big part. Yeah. Um, so that, that that is obviously a big part. Um, and another reason, and this is probably the biggest driver, is equity, mm -hmm. ownership, entrepreneurship. Right. We don't have enough of that. We did at one point in time. Yeah. Like I, I, I was actually born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And you know, obviously the early 1900s, they had Black Wall Street where we had a ton of black-owned businesses. Like right. Very thriving. Um, and and no longer today. And um, a lot of people think it was because of the race riot and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of. It, you know, it really came down to the fact that we, you know, just forgot about the importance of ownership of our own mm -hmm. businesses and supporting our own businesses. Right. And the thing is, like, today we're, you know, before we had, we were mitigated, I mean, well, we were hindered by lack of education, lack of capital, things like that. We still deal with a lot of those issues, but a lot of people are still educated today. Right. You know, we're going to college, we're going to, um, you know, we're getting, um, you know, higher degrees. Right. You know, we're going to business school, we're going to law school, we're going to med school. And we get comfortable, you know, <laughs> which we get a job, we're making a lot of money, and we're fine with that. And we're fine maybe, you know, working our way up the corporate ladder. Um, and we, we don't want to make that jump. And it's not really, we don't think we're capable of it. I mean, we have a lifestyle that we're trying to, right? Take, right? We, you know, we make more money and then we spend more. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that that is the biggest hindrance. Mm. Um, we, you know, we, so, and the thing is, like, we only have one life, right? Yeah. Like, one it's, life, it's one life to live. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> one of the best speeches that I, I look at it all the time is uh, Steve Jobs, his, um, his graduation speech at Stanford. Mm. I mean, that's something you could watch. Yeah, everywhere. I love that speech. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's like, we have one life, right? We don't, no seconds, no repeats. Right. So why not take as much risk as you can, you know? Yeah. Like, Makes sense. Yeah, and then and then also you know kind of lack of accountability um, for excuses. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think that yeah, people suffer from excuses. Yeah, right. That's a good way to put it. You know, we're we're and I, I hate to. You know, this is really not my style of judgment. I'm just answering the question. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, but you know, it's like you know, I think many times you know people are more more prone to point to a reason why something is the way it is as opposed to figuring out mm -hmm. how to change it. Yeah. So what would you say, um, with that being said, is, is the number one factor to your success? Um, well, I still got a long way to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> you come pretty far, man. Yeah, 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 still got a long way. Yeah, but, um, um, but if, hey, a, a number one factor. So I don't know if there's one single factor, mm -hmm. but there's like a, a few things that I, I do think I believe in. Okay. Um, so I talked about taking risk. Right. Um, you know, you gotta like putting yourself in a situation where you're you're you're, you're exposing yourself to new things. Mm -hmm. You're getting outside of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? Um, that th that's been very valuable to me. Right. You know, if 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 I if I didn't put myself to be outside of my comfort zone, I'd probably still be in Oklahoma <laughs> and, and whatever. I don't right. Know. Still with the mom. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so that's one. Doing what you're good at, I've learned that that's important. Um, you know, a lot, 
and, and not, a lot of people say, oh, like you need to work on your, your weaknesses. And that, that's cool too, mm -hmm. like work on your weaknesses. Or, you know, you can get people around you, depending on what you're trying to do or right. build, that complement your weaknesses, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that their strengths are your weaknesses. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard John Maxwell say, focus on your strengths. Yeah. Because your weaknesses are never going to be above a six on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. You know? So. And yeah, do what you're good at, and maybe that helps you find your passion. Yeah. I do feel like, our, I spoke about it, brands are important. Um, so you, you align yourself with good brands and the best brands you can get, that becomes valuable. It's mm -hmm. like a network effect. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, man, it comes down, for me, it's, it's you know, it's going to sound vague again, it's ambition and hard work. Okay. You know, there's a lot of smart people out here, there's a lot of talented people out here, not everyone's willing to work hard. And so true. if you're very driven, there should be no reason why someone should outwork you. And if you're not getting a desired outcome, you can always work harder. I learned that so many times in life. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're trying to, I don't know, gain weight by putting on, you know, by working out, lifting weights, right. and you're not gaining as much weight as you want, well, just work out harder. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it, it's, made, it's not going to be easy. Go more. Be um, more consistent. Yeah, but, but go harder. You can always, if you're not getting a desired outcome, you can always work harder. And that's always uh, helped me. And, and then ambition. You know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. If I wasn't, I would say, like, growing up naive enough to believe that I could do anything I wanted. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, you know, I, did I grow up thinking I was going to go to Harvard Business School? I, did, I don't think I necessarily had that thought, but did, you know, was it ever a thought in my mind that I could not go to Harvard Business School? No way. So you've come far. You, you might say that you haven't reached, the, you know, the pinnacle of your success yet, but I think a lot of people would say that you've come a very long way. And for any high school kids or people back in Oklahoma, they might look up to you as a mentor, you know? So right. what advice would you give to those people who want to get to, to HBS or into the financial industry or make it to Wall Street? What would you say to them um, about making it to where you're at? Right, so um, I guess I can echo some of what I just said, but I mean, number one, like hard work. Ambition and hard work. Um, you know, when I was trying to get into the finance industry, on Wall Street, I read every book. If someone told me to read a book, I mm. went and got it and read it that day. Yeah, you know, um, like putting in the work, doing the research, making sure when you speak to someone or you're applying for something or you're looking to do something, you know everything about it. Mm. You know, there's no excuse for that. Know your craft. Yeah, know your craft. Always, always sharpen your craft. And it's great that you said that. Um, Ray McGuire, um, global head of investment banking at City, uh, one of the most successful kind of you know, African American finance guys. Yeah. You know, he he's a sharp guy. He he always said that and actually resonated with me when I was, you know, kind of first starting investment banking. He said, you know, you always have to continue to master your craft. Like whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Building financial models and, you know, focus on the analytical work and things like that. Just making sure that you're always sharp. Whatever it is. You have to be. Yeah. You have to always be prepared. So um that's one thing. Um, uh, you know, the, the importance of networking and relationships. N yeah, n n yeah, nothing is bigger than that. Um, you know, it, it, it can, you meet a person who introduces you to a person, mm -hmm. five more people later, <laughs> you find this crazy opportunity, which happens all the time, all right, the to time. all of us, right? Yeah. So um, that's important, man. It's about spreading that net wide. And, and, and you know, they, when they say, you know, success is when preparation meets opportunity, that's what it really comes down to. You know, you work hard. You make sure you're sharp, you make sure you're prepared, you spread the net wide, make sure that you're networking all the time, building relationships, and, and you know, you'll be fine. Just know that you can do it. Yeah. Everyone's capable. I, I, you know, I've met people that you, you can't believe their story. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, look at Don Thompson. So, yeah. You know, he grew up in Cabrini Green Projects and CEO of McDonald's. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a ton of stories like that that, um, you know, we're, we're all capable, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's what Melanie Hobson said yesterday, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it's like you're in jail and you have the bars in front of you, but you have the key, mm. you know, you just got to open it yourself. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of times we're held back Psychological. by Psychological. Yeah. So yeah, man. that's the best advice I can well, give, man. That kind of concludes my, uh, my questions here with the Sean Hart interview. I'm Chris Malone, I appreciate your time, my man. Hey, man, I appreciate you being here, man. It's great to chat with you. Yeah, man. Amen. All right.